Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're talking springtime jig fishing. I'm going to help you simplify your jig fishing by making sure that you're throwing the right jigs in the right scenarios. Today's going to be a quick video for the purpose of simplification. I don't want to complicate jig fishing for you this spring. We can go incredibly far down this rabbit hole. I'm as passionate about jig fishing as I am about swim baits, as I am about crankbaits, but you can also take a very simple approach and it works incredibly well all through the spring. So today what we're going to talk about is a couple of different scenarios and the right jigs for the job. We'll talk about what to do if you're in a reservoir, you know, clearer water, that sort of a situation, what to do if you're in more of a grass impoundment, and then what to do if you don't know. And also a trick for you that's going to make a big difference. So. Let's start on the reservoir end of it, okay? And then we'll talk, actually, you know what? Let's talk about if you don't know first. Let's go there. So, if you're a reservoir guy, we're leaning towards the finesse end. If you're a guy that's going to face a lot of heavy cover, a lot of grass, or muddy water, if you get blown out in the springtime, you get a lot of that chocolate milk water, that's the other end of the spectrum. If you're the guy, somewhere in the middle, you don't know, you can literally get away with one jig. So this style of head is an arky style head. See how it's kind of a rounded head? Okay, they call that a pitchin' head. So this is a pitchin' jig, Dirty Jigs pitchin' jig, in a natural tone. And I'm not even going to get caught up on color in this video for you, okay? Just know a natural tone, you could throw Go to, Molting Craw, Magic Craw, uh, Green Pumpkin, uh, Brown Craw, Green Pumpkin Craw, all sorts of different jigs will fit that natural scenario. So don't get too caught on color, but a pitching style head, if you don't know what you're going to face this year, but you know that you want to throw a jig, get a pitching jig in either three eighths or half ounce, and then this, is a Reaction Innovations Beaver, a very simple trailer, not a lot of movement. Anybody who's been watching our videos for years knows how much I love this combination. It's tied on almost every day of the year because whatever I face, I can make it work. I can take a natural colored jig and add a crazy looking trailer and get it to work in muddy water. I can also take that natural jig and get it to work in really clear water. Maybe not as well as one of these finesse guys we're about to talk about, but it will still work. So it will meet virtually every situation. So this is a beaver. I'm gonna take the first four ribs off of that. You can do it with scissors, you can do it by hand. Twist those off of there. And I'm going to split the tails. Now this color is just green pumpkin, black flake, green pumpkin, red. Again, Magic Craw, it's got a little blue in it. Any of those natural tones. Thread that guy on there, right down the center. Pop out the side, push it up until it's straight. And there we have it. If you don't know what you're going to face, a pitching jig with a beaver on the back it's just sort of a dead action trailer. It's about profile, not about movement with this trailer. That guy will work in almost every situation, okay? How's that for simple? Now from there, let's go to the reservoir end, the clearer end, then let's talk about the murkier end, the grassier end, and then we'll circle back with that trick real quick. So on the finessier end, if you're more of a reservoir guy, there are still a bunch of jigs that can work for you. There are a lot of options, but for the sake of keeping it simple in the springtime, this year, let's just focus in on football style heads. Okay, those are football heads. 
named that because it is shaped like a football. These are finesse footballs, so lighter wire hooks. As we head into spring, that water's still cool. The fish don't pull as hard as they do when the water warms up. So you don't need as big of a hook to keep them pinned. The same fish that you can land easily in February, March, April, will pull like a bulldog in May, June, July. Now there's some crossover there in April where that water starts warm and they start getting stronger. So pay attention. But the benefit of a finesse hook is that you can go to lighter line. That sun finally went away. It was bright a minute ago. You can go to lighter line, which means more bites in clear water. So if I was throwing a standard football jig, I might have to throw that on 15 or 17 pound line to be able to consistently set that hook. When I go to a finesse football, I can go to 10 or 12 pound line. I'll get more bites and I can still plant that hook no problem. Now, again, this is a full size finesse football. This is the little Kitek football, little tiny guy. Here, look how small that hook is. You can go all the way down to five, six, seven, eight pound line and set that hook. You can throw it on a spinning rod if you want to. So again, it's just getting more bites. How clear is your water? So for the reservoir guy, let's put trailers on these and then we'll talk about how you choose, okay? If I could only have one, let me unhook these. There's a Yamamoto double tail grub. If I could only ever have one trailer to put on a standard finesse football, it's a double tail grub. This is the Yamamoto. The other one I throw as the water warms up is the Big Bite, because the Big Bite comes in a color called tilapia, which I really, really like. But the Yamamoto is incredibly soft. So as that water is still cool, it moves extremely well in that cold water, I get more bites. But as the water warms up, the plastics, they're softer. The colder the water, the actual plastics that we're using get more rigid. They get tougher. They don't move as well in the water. As the water warms, that goes away because the plastics are warmer, they move better. So again, as that water warms up, I use that big bite for that tilapia color. But when it's really, really cold water, I throw that Yamamoto double tail. So that's set up right there, okay? And again, really natural tones. And in the video description, obviously I'm gonna link you all these jigs, all the trailers, and I'll give you two or three of my favorite colors for each. But you don't need two or three colors. Just pick a natural one and go with it. Now that Kitek jig, I normally throw a TRD Bugs on there, okay? It's like a small version of the beaver, basically. But lately, I have been fishing it. This is a little net bait pack a chunk. Okay, a little tiny, tiny guy. This is the smallest one. This isn't the regular chunk, it's the tiny chunk. Look how well this fits on this Kitek jig. So if I want that more basic action, colder water, I'm not moving my bait as much. I use that bugs, but lately I've been experimenting with that guy. Man, that thing looks good. I've been experimenting with that guy with that tiny packa on there and those legs are kicking and it looks really, really good. And I've been catching a bunch of fish on that setup right there. So how do you choose which way to go? Because these are very different jigs, right? The jig in general just gets a big bite. So the reason I'm throwing a jig as opposed to a creature bait is that overall, if you throw it day after day after day, you will catch a bigger overall fish on a jig. And in the springtime, we wanna catch those big ones. They're up, they're moving. You know, we spend a lot of time reaction fishing, power fishing, but when those storms come in, when the conditions get weird and all of a sudden you can't get a reaction bite, Boom, I go to the jig. 
The reason why I do that, somebody else would go to a drop shot. Somebody else would go to a Nico rig or a shaky head. I go to the jig because if I'm going to put in the time and I'm going to slow down, I want to know that when I cross paths with a giant, my odds are at the absolute peak that she's going to eat that bait. And we know from history that they consistently eat the jig. I just have better odds. So adding to that, the larger jigs tend to get a bigger bite than the smaller jigs. Even a small jig will get a bigger bite than a, than a worm typically. Now, not every day, not every scenario, but if we're just playing the odds, it'll get a bigger bite. But a bigger jig will tend to get a bigger bite than a smaller jig. So reservoir guys, clear water guys, go with the biggest jig you can get away with. But if they won't eat it, if you're not having success, if you're not getting the number of bites you would like, downsize. Just don't downsize too far. That Kitek jig is perfect. If you start going smaller than that, like I have nothing against a hula grub. I've thrown a hula grub basically my entire life. That's a like a Yamamoto double tail, but with a skirt on top. I have some in the boat somewhere. They work incredibly well for getting bit, but there is something that happens when you switch from a jig down to a hula grub style bait that overall size comes back down. It starts catching fish more like a worm. So downsize, but stay with an actual jig profile for as long as you can. And the odds of catching that fish that you're looking for go sky high compared to other baits. Now, murkier water, guys fishing muddy water, guys fishing around grass, we're going to keep it really simple there too. This is a flipping style head, okay? These are the same head, just different sizes. The flipping head is really, really, really good in everything except wood. See how it's like a pointed head? If you have hard wood and you've got a, say you've got a branch sticking off a log, and that comes in and sticks in that crack, it is stuck. So that pitchin head that we talked about before, when it comes in there, it doesn't wedge in. So even if it hangs up, you can shake it, you can pop the line, and it'll typically come up and over. Whereas a pointed head, a true flipping head, will actually wedge in, and it is permanent, and you are breaking that jig off. Now with that said, that is its only weakness. In grass, flipping jigs are king because again, it's a pointed head. It'll come into that grass and it just opens it up, pushes it out of the way, goes right through. They're incredible around grass and shallow cover. So if you're fishing that murkier water, we're going to abandon those natural tones and we're going to go to more of those dark tones the black and blues the black blue purples this is a color i've talked about for years this is hematoma it's mostly black but you can see the blue in there if you put a natural trailer in there this becomes a very natural jig but if you put a bold trailer in there it becomes a perfect standout in that murky water so i really like hematoma because it can go both directions, but if you know that water's muddy, just go bold. Go with black blue. This is blackened blue. There are a bunch of options. Again, I'll link you two or three of my favorites, so don't get hung up on color. Focus on the head style. If you're in a grass fishery, if you're fishing that muddier water, the reason why I keep saying muddy water is because if you've got rising muddy water in the spring, your lake gets flooded. Whether or not you have grass, when it's flooding, the fish go dirt shallow, they go right to the shoreline and they follow that mud up. So even if your lake doesn't have grass per se, because you're flooding, the fish will be in inches of water and they'll be right up on the shoreline in the grass, in the cover, in the bushes. They'll be up in that stuff that isn't normally in your lake. So you're going to treat it just like a grass lake. So flipping style head. Weight. 
that's totally up to you. You know, you can go really light and that'll float through that stuff better. So if your vegetation's super thick and you wanna kinda stay on top, go with a really lightweight jig. I tend to go to a heavy jig, half, five eighths, three quarter, because you can really bust down through that stuff. I stay more connected. If I'm pulling it up over cover, there's enough weight there that I can let it fall back in. Pull it up over, let it fall back in. Lighter jigs will just sort of stay on top. So if you wanna stay on top of grass, you go to a light jig. If you wanna bust down through heavy cover up in the shallows, go with a heavier jig. Trailers. This is where I like more movement. I tend to like more of those dead action style trailers, but when I've got that murkier water, I like movement. I wanna draw those fish. So this is a kinky beaver. This again is the bigger size of the pack of chunk. You could throw a, a rage cross, something with serious movement to it, okay? Take the first four off again on that beaver. Thread that guy right on, just like we did with our pitch and jig with the regular beaver. And you have got a muddy water, shallow cover jig right there that will get big bites. Now, let's do this one. Here's a little different scenario for you. Here's the tip. Remember this guy. Now you can do this with a big old flipping jig. I do it a lot with football jigs. When the water gets murky, when the floods come, when the rain comes, because it will come in the springtime, no way around it. Even clear water lakes will get flushed with some mud and the fish go straight to it. They love that mud. They get right up in there. I've talked about this before, so you may have seen it, but I haven't talked about it for a long time. So most of you probably have not. This is something I've been doing basically since I was a kid and I get more bites, I get big bites, is adding chartreuse into the core of the jig when that water gets muddy. Other people are so focused on those dark tones, that black blue, and it works but you take a little bit of chartreuse and put it in the mix, they're all over it. So this is a five inch Senko. Just buy a pack of Senkos, buy chartreuse black flake, buy fire tiger, buy any of the bright colored Senkos, okay? Cut out a little section. Take your jig, be it a flipping jig, football jig, pitching jig, doesn't matter. Take that guy, thread him on there, Just right through the center. Slide them all the way up. Now take your trailer. Now with a chunk style trailer, it's easy. I just don't go as far through it. With a beaver style trailer or with a double tail style trailer, I would just cut the trailer short and that chartreuse would replace the midsection in there, okay? Then we take that chunk And we just don't go as far back as we would normally go. You're literally adding a chartreuse core inside of that jig. Same thing with a football. In fact, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show you. Because I'll keep throwing a natural colored jig, like a super matte brown, green pumpkin craw, any of those really natural ones. When that mud comes to a reservoir, I don't immediately go to like a harsh black blue jig. I don't. I keep my exact same natural jig, but I add that chartreuse. Man, I'm telling you, it, they just find it. And there's something about it. I mean, they just eat it. So now I've taken my double tail grub and just trimmed it way down. There's my core, thread that on behind it. You wanna throw something that the next guy's not throwing? See that? 
that's it. When that water gets murky, start hopping that jig, be aggressive, they'll feel it. They come in, they can spot that chartreuse and they eat it good. If you were using like a blue tip trailer, sometimes they'll just grab those tails. Not when that core is chartreuse, they aim straight for it. They get a mouthful and they get that hook. So going back, if you don't know what to do, get yourself a pitching jig and just go boldly, you will catch fish. If you know you're going to be faced with that crystal clear water, focus in on those footballs, but you know how to adapt if that water starts getting murky. If you're one of those guys that knows every spring your lake blows out, it gets flooded, those fish go shallow, or you know you're on a grass fishery, you're going to be constantly in that stuff, in that heavy cover, you're on a shallow water fishery, go to those flipping heads, either go bold or add that bit of chartreuse and you'll be surprised by what happens. Now, as far as rods and reels go, for the sake of time, I'll link them down in the description. I'll give you a budget option and then I'll give you my actual favorites, what I really fish with. Uh, but something like that Brailleist. Uh, I've been playing with the Brailleist a lot lately. It works just so, so well for those mid-range, like a pitching jig style. But if we're talking a full-blown flipping jig, you wanna go heavy, like a 7.6 extra heavy or a 7.6 heavy, something where you can really put the power to them because you're talking a lot of hook. So I'll link you my favorite for that. And then again, with, with footballs, particularly a full-size football, I use a very specific rod. I love those MBR action rods. They flex so well. So I'll link you my favorite for that. The little Kitech jigs, you can throw on virtually any finesse rod, whether that's a finesse casting rod, like a BFS rod, or you could throw it on like the 610 Medium X Pride that we throw our jerk baits on. Uh, you can throw it on virtually any light rod or just your spinning rod, like your all around your shaky head rod, your Senko rod, uh, even a really heavy drop shot rod in the lighter heads, doesn't matter. So the Kitech style jigs, it's a really, really simple. The bigger jigs are where you want a dedicated jig rod where it's got a combination of a, a lot of give in the tip section met with backbone. And that's a hard combo because you need enough backbone that you can really hit those fish hard and you can put power to them. But you need enough tip section because a jig is not a lightweight bait. There's a lot of weight there. You need enough tip section when, when those fish come up and they thrash that the tip does not fully unload. A rod that's too stiff, it'll unload when they jump and they start to thrash. It'll load and unload and it, they'll come off. But if it loads up deep enough that even though they're thrashing and even though it's unloading, it never fully unloads, it never goes slack, you'll keep those fish pinned and you'll land way more of them and you'll land the big ones. Guys, I hope this helps you. I tried to keep it really simple for you going into spring. The jig gets big bites. You want it in your arsenal. We power fish most of the time, but when the scenario changes, when that water starts flooding, if, the, if a front comes through, if those fish shut down, they just don't wanna react, slow it down, pick up a jig. You can still get those giant bites. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.